So what is true discipleship? It's amazing how many people get this wrong. Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Thanks for joining me today. I'm having a little bit of Headbangers Brew this morning. The best coffee in the world, I'm just saying, in whole bean and ground and decaf and very soon, K-Cups. I know, K-Cups. You asked for it, we're bringing it. And my mug this morning is one of our older ones. And it says, um, black metal, black coffee, that's how I roll. And it's one of our Metal Dude mugs. That's cool, isn't it? Our poster of the month is this one. Jesus is God's selfie. <laughs> I love this one. And of course, you can get all of this and more at wearemetalwearefamily.com. Here is our question for today, dear Pastor Bob. What does true discipleship mean in the church? I would love to hear your thoughts, and I would love to give you my thoughts. Now, I realize that the church has some basic standards for discipleship, and what they feel like discipleship is is simply taking the Bible and teaching it to you. That's part of it, but it's definitely not all. And you know what's interesting to me, how many times we miss the mark in true discipleship. Now, there's a portion of scripture we always go to, and I'm going to keep going to it. And you say, Pastor Bob, why do you keep using the same scriptures over and over? And the reason is they're the best scriptures for a lot of these questions, and they're scriptures I want you to remember. They're go-to scriptures. This is one of those go-to scriptures. You'll want to underline it, memorize it, whatever you want to do. And you'll want to be sure that you always go to this one when you have these kinds of questions because the definition is awesome. And of course, it's found in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And it talks about the New Testament church, the first church, the, the church that kind of set the standard. And here's what they did. They were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the, of the apostles, which, by the way, we still have right here. It's written down. And to fellowship to eating meals together, and to prayer. Now, these are four things. We get, when we talk about discipleship, we get the first one right, usually. We don't always get the rest of them right. In fact, we rarely do. Instruction from the apostles is one of the things we still have. It's written down. And it's one of the things that we do well, and it's really a foundation. Know the Bible, know God. But instruction to the apostles, from of the apostles, and fellowship, you know, enjoying talking and, you know, Socratic discussion and all of that. That's how you learn from each other. Eating meals together, they simply ate together. They ate together. Something happens when you eat together. We've talked about that before. But it's a, it's, a, it's a great way to just relax and enjoy each other's company. That's why when people get together, there's usually food involved. I know. And to prayers. They prayed together, not just by themselves, but corporately. So this began to happen, these four things. And then verse 43 says, A sense of awe was felt by everyone, and many wonders and signs attesting miracles were taking place through the apostles. 
And all of those who had believed in Jesus as Savior were together, and they had all things in common, considering their possessions to belong to the group as a whole. And they began selling their property and their possessions and were sharing the proceeds with all the other believers as anyone had need to care of each other. But they didn't stop there. Listen to this, verse 46. Day after day, they met in the temple area, continuing with one mind, the mind of Christ, breaking bread, including the Lord's Supper. In other words, not just eating together, but also remembering the Lord's Supper, communion, in various private homes. They were eating their meals together with joy and generous hearts, praising God continually and having favor with all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their numbers daily who were being saved. This is revival and this is discipleship. You see, discipleship, if I could just give you a really simple definition, it would mean living your life in front of people, living your life including people, living your life challenging people. In other words, living who you are in Christ with others who are just beginning to learn. And it isn't just about, okay, I have to teach you the word of God, that's discipleship. It's taking my life and imparting it to you. It is devoting myself to the Bible and not just teaching it to you, but allowing you to experience it working in my life. It is fellowship with you, spending time with you, listening to your questions listening to your concerns, listening to your joys. It's eating meals together, just spending that kind of common time with each other, just enjoying each other and communion and praying together. Now, that is true discipleship. You say, well, I don't see that happening very much and neither do I, but this is how it's defined in the New Testament church. Folks, we have to get back to this. You know, and I think churches need to restructure. You know, starting at a certain time, certain form of worship, certain form of of announcements, and then the offering, and then the Bible reading, and then the sermon, and then the closing prayer, and then the closing song, and then everybody shakes each other's hands, and they go home, and that really has to stop. Now that's okay, but if that's all there is, no, it's not okay, because this is the standard. Do you understand that it's living life together? It's not just spectator sport, watching somebody else talk and then go home. It's being involved and enjoying the favor of all the people, spending time with them. If you have a chance today, would you read over this scripture? Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47. And make this part of your quest. And you don't have to turn your whole church around, but invite some people to do this with you. Live life with you. This kind of discipleship is the very thing that changes people's lives. Well, don't forget, folks, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.